let's see the incisions used in periodontal flap so you have uh, it can broadly be categorized into horizontal incisions and vertical incisions so what are horizontal incisions they are incisions given from mesial to distal direction first incision if you see that is nothing but internal bevel incision it is also called as reverse bevel incision you use 15 15 c blade to do this incision and the uh, it would actually start from the gingival margin to the alveolar crest okay the objectives uh, which is which is achieved by using this incision is that it will remove the pocket lining over here the outer portion of the gingiva is conserved and it provides a thin flap margin so that a good tooth bone adaptation is there once you complete the flap next coming to the second incision which is nothing but the crevicular incision it is done by the blade 12d here the incision is from the gingival sulcus to the bone margin so when this incision is given a wedged v shaped wedge is formed around the tooth so this v shaped wedge will contain okay the most inflamed and granulomatous tissue okay of the lateral wall of the pocket and it will also contain junctional epithelium and connective tissue fibers okay so this is the crevicular incision once this crevicular incision is given okay you actually what you do is that you try to elevate the flap you reflect the flap and then the third incision comes which is called as the interdental incision this is also a horizontal incision which is given by an orbins knife where this is a interdental incision is given to remove the collar like tissue which is around the tooth okay next coming to what is called the vertical incision so the vertical incision is given from the occlusal to apical direction which mean occlusal to apical direction so where we have given the horizontal incision and without giving a vertical incision if you elevate a flap that is no vertical incision you elevate a flap you call it as envelope flap okay if one vertical incision is given then we call it as triangular flap and if two vertical incisions are given it is called as pedicle flap so vertical incisions cannot be given in palatal and lingual side and one more thing is it vertical incision should be given at the line angle of the tooth it should not be given in the radicular area or in the interdental area and also one more thing is that the height to base ratio okay it should be it should not exceed 2 is to 1 because this could jeopardize the blood supply okay next coming to flap elevation a uh, flap elevation if you see in full thickness flap we use the periosteal elevator to reflect the flap and the direction in which we do so is first in the mesial distal and then the apical direction whereas for the partial thickness flap we use the 15 blade to do a sharp dissection okay next coming to a procedure called interdental denudation procedure so what is interdental denudation procedure is that we give horizontal non scalloped internal bevel incision okay and we denude this papilla so once it is done healing takes place by what is called secondary intention and we would get once it is healed you get you will get a excellent gingival contour so the contraindication would be you cannot use in cases of aesthetic areas we cannot use it and either you are going to use any bone graft or membrane this technique cannot be used next coming to healing after periodontal flap okay so uh, the periodontal flap is reflected and we have done the osseous uh, surgeries and then we have sutured it back 
Once we have sutured it back, immediately after surgery, which is less than or equal to 24 hours, a blood clot forms, okay? A blood clot forms, which is rich in fibrin. You will have leukocytes and you will have a lot of erythrocytes, okay? So the blood clot is formed between the tooth, bone and the flap. Next coming to after one to three days, what happens is that the epithelium over here, okay, here you can see, you know, the epithelium will start migrating and contacting the tooth at this point. And the space, the space will actually get reduced where you have the blood clot, the space between the flap and bone and the tooth will get reduced, okay. Then what happens one week after surgery, the epithelium will actually uh, form a basal lamina. It will get attached to the tooth via a basal lamina and hemidesposomes. Okay, I've just zoomed into that area. And the blood clot will be replaced by what is called granulation tissue, which is derives its source from the gingival connective tissue, the bone marrow, okay, and the periodontal ligament. Next, Two weeks after surgery, what happens? The collagen fibers will start to form, but they will form parallel to the tooth surface. Next, one month after surgery, a well-defined epithelialized gingival crevice forms. Then, a epithelial attachment, a good epithelial attachment, as well as a functional arrangement of supracrystal fibers start to begin. Thank you.